Hey guys. So today, we're going to be talking about the robot. So as you can see, we don't have motors on a robot, but we have these things called clutch motors, or that's how we like to call them. We have two color sensors, and we also have a touch sensor in the back. The two color sensors and the touch sensor, we will be using those in our third mission right here. So our touch sensor will be plug in to this. So when something hits, when the robot hits a wall, it will travel through the touch sensor into the, our actual touch sensor. Also, the color sensors will plug in through these two holes right here, one and two. And that's how we are able to track the line and uh, double line track, double line up. Okay, so on our robot, we have um, this little uh, toggle right here. So when this gear is out right here, uh, the linear gear won't be able to move. And that's how we're, that's how we trans, um, that's how we change between mission two and mission three. So after we're done with mission two, we take our robot out of the, uh, the big machine and we basically just push the toggle to the left so that uh, we're able to um, actually use our linear gears to hang up on the wall. Okay. So what we have here is uh, our, I guess, Swiss knife or our um, multi-use device. So basically, uh, this allows us to um, create a false wall. So as you can see, our table is um, not all the way to the end. So with this tool, we can have a half, one, one and a half, and two. So we can have up to two, uh, I guess, we can have up to two bricks of false wall to compensate for the fact that we uh, don't have the mat all the way to the wall. Now moving on to our machine. So for our first mission, we use this, which is um, two sets of carabiners, one for the bee and then one for the pig. So our cur a little curved uh, piece right here will allow us to um, push the pig um, inside the robot for the carabiner to catch. And um, right here, we have um, our device for the food. So all the robot does is move its linear gear in and out, and it will basically line up to here. What we discovered is that sometimes uh, the refrigerator gets stuck. So we have a little um, pushback right here. Also, we noticed that Sometimes the food, when it's dispensed, it will uh, be close. So as the robot's going back and forth, we wanted the, um, the catcher to still be up against the refrigerator. So we developed this device where when this is pulling the refrigerator, the, the catcher is still there. All it's doing is it's moving back and forth between the catcher and so that the refrigerator is still dispensing and the food is still coming out and be, being caught in here. Now, moving on to mission two. So, um, right here, uh, we have um, the place where we're holding the uh, dog and trainer and also one manure. Okay. So, we're, we hold the manure in front and uh, we also have the pig we have the pig held on the other side. So all we do is at the end of the mission, when we're about to pick up a robot, we have the pig come out, uh, which will eventually be in the uh, zone. And then at the same time, uh, this is dropped into the box. These two are held on the same motor. Okay, so in mission two, we, um, we use the clutch motors as I showed before, 
and we interlock them with the four prong technic gears. So in addition, um, for our mission one and mission two, as you can see, they both use the same base robot, but we, we also have attachments that separately go on this. So for example, we have this, which will help us deliver two food to the gorilla. We also, as I've showed before, we have the food attachment that we take off after the first mission. Over on this side, we have the B. It's a passive arm that when the robot drives by, it will drop off. So as we, in mission one and mission two, we put down our, our wall grabbing arm, which will allow us to go straight. Because in our robot, we only have one driving motor. This allows for three other motors to be used for arms. So right now, one motor out of the three is being used to grab the wall. This will allow us to stay on the wall as we're going down the, the field. So in mission two, start up. We push the, color, the food into the uh, circle. Next, we go down and we drop the bee onto the hive, the uh, honey came out. This is all, um, that was passive. So, as you can see, we have a color sensor down here. This allows us to be more active with our robot since the amount of gears in our robot is um, sometimes confusing and the ratio is sometimes a little strange, so we, it's very hard to measure the right rotations. So while we're down here, we check up on the black line many times in order to know exactly where we are. And um, it's very helpful sometimes. Also in this mission, we stretch out the arm to uh, not only do the, pit, do the milk, we also are able to do the panda release. So on our Mission 3 chassis, we have these um, curved edges right here. Not only for skids, but here is to protect the color sensors. And since they're more of a rectangular surface on the animal, on the uh, crosswalk, on the blind man mission, um, sometimes they would get stuck or collide with the axles at the bottom. And so this allows it to be more smooth. We have built this whole hulking contraption solely for the shark so we do not have to designate a separate mission. This contraption goes over the barriers and does not run into any of them. And after doing this, the robot goes forward and uh, we have this barrier to keep the manure here from messing with the wheels. And simultaneously, we also drop this food out of our food dropper into the target area. Then we line up and come to the animal conservation and hit the thing and it turns and then we go back and line up again and st still without letting the manure hit the wheels we come forward drop the other food here continue to go forward line up on this line Continue to go forward and drop the remaining food there. Then we back up into the wall and our touch sensor engages when we are at the wall. And that tells the robot that it is time to push up from the attachments and begin to hang on the wall. So basically we split up the board into the south side of and the north side um, and we have missions one and two running on this chassis along the south side and then we have mission three 
going from the south to the north side, um, from the east to the west. And that's using the smaller chassis because it comes around, um, hits the fence, and then comes along here. And the reason why we have Mission 1 and 2 running along the south side of the, um, of the map is so that we have to, we can limit um, motion and by do, and the variables that we use to com complete the missions. And by doing that, um, we have more consistent runs every time. So for this chassis, we just have um, this running along the x-axis. Well, we have our linear gear running along the y-axis in order to complete all of our missions. So we can basically get everything done with the linear gear um, and all of our other features on here are mainly passive. Um, the only other motor driven thing we have is this in order to put out the pick. Um, and mission three, what we do is we have our smaller chassis come through here and it instead of having uh, one one motor driving all four wheels or two wheels and in order to just go into a straight line we have uh, two motors and since uh, that chassis is more maneuverable we can run over this without messing up um, because of consistency or just the alignment of the robot itself and if even if it does that then we have this line in order to um, reset ourselves. So this is like sort of a checkpoint. And once we turn and come back, uh, we realign again and move here. And that's to have the most consistent run. So basically, you want to have the most consistent run by eliminating the amount of variables you have with each mission. And uh, another thing with the wall is we wanted to make it more, it, 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 we wanted to make the chassis light um, and easier to detach than this. Um, for example, for this we have to disconnect the light sensor, but we don't do that on this chassis so that um, the robot itself would just climb onto the wall. Um, regarding this chassis, uh, in order to save time, basically what we did was we ran this along um, up to this line and um, like before we had our the, the rest of this mission was to go and grab the camera but we found that that wasn't uh, worth the time so we what we do is we pick up our robot um, and unplug it from the light sensor and bring it back while that's how while this is running um, we have one of our team members run up uh, to base and set up our third third mission chassis and by doing that we only have a 10 second transition and we save time so that we can do our third mission effectively.